Hello and welcome to everybody who made it back from the from the break. Um, I'm not sure. Do I need the microphone or yes. can you hear me? Yes. I need the microphone. Very good. Excellent. And let's do that. So um, my name is Andreas Sint. I'm working for Sitcom Systems, and I'm here to talk to you about system tools written in Object Studio Smalltalk. Um, we. A couple of years ago, uh, I said I was presenting some some slides about the new GUI that we do in Object Studio, and uh, together with these new UI elements, we have, or I have, developed a set of new tools to help me, to help us in the community to actually debug and diagnose problems that you can have with the with the user interface and the, in the operating system. And that's what the talk uh, today is all about. So, uh, just want to go over the intention. Uh, next thing is about our states and the capabilities that you find in today's uh, Windows machines. The thing, small tool called the GUI generator, uh, the Windows Spy and the Window Finder, the, the Process Explorer, and uh, a tool that helped us uh, very, very much in the past uh, called the GDI one. And after that, I think there are time to come for, for questions. Um, intentions. Uh, what was the intention for the system tools to be built? Um, we, as I said, we need uh, some tools to test, debug, diagnose the new GUI that I've been writing for, for Object Studio at the moment. But that's not, not enough. We already have a, a tool, a certain robot that uh, helps us to, to do GUI testing and uh, the problem with that tool is it's not written in Smalltalk, so you don't have access to all the Smalltalk objects, you have access to the outside. Um, which the GUI testing talk is, is, is tomorrow, but it ties heavily into the, into the system tools today. I want to start with the power capabilities because they're not really system tools in this case. Um, but power capabilities, I look around, I see all the laptops and the tablets available. At the moment, uh, right here, everybody's using. Um, it helps me to identify the, the machine and helps me to figure out uh, what kind of tests I can run afterwards. Also, for, for applications, it's, it's nice to know do I run on a, uh, on a laptop or do I have any, uh, is there a lid present? What happens if the lid is, is closed? Do I close it? Uh, do I shut down? Do I get to, uh, to sleep and to hibernate? Um, is there a battery present? Is there a thermal control present? All those things you can do, you can use and, and test for in this uh, in these system tools. Uh, the power state actually allows you uh, to control the power management features of today's Windows. Um, we receive status notifications from Windows about what the uh, state changes if battery drops 10%. Uh, the lid is closed or what, whatever. Um, a power management events, modified system of application, power requirements, which is another big thing that if you have a long running application or long running task that you need to do and not to be shut down in the middle of it, uh, you can tell the system, uh, I don't care whatever it says in your power policies. Uh, you're not going to shut down because I need this system, I need this resource for the next foreseeable future until I tell you otherwise. Um, otherwise, I have, I always frequently run into trouble uh, that my GUI tests were not done because the machine was actually powered down by the, uh, uh, by the policy to say after 10 minutes you go to sleep and the, the GUI tests run longer than the, the test 10 minutes. Um, if you have a long running algorithm encoding pictures, encoding videos, or whatnot, you probably know that those applications actually tell Windows you are not going to shut down while I'm, while I'm running. And now you can do the same thing, not just for the test, but also for, the, for applications. Uh, one is called the waiting mode required, uh, display is required, so I need the display. Um, I get this events for suspended hibernate, uh, as well as the uh, announcement that, okay, I'm going to suspend right now. Um, and afterwards, I resume from suspend. 
So I, if somebody shuts the lid with the, with the image already uh, still open, you can now gracefully shut down database um, connections, um, sever any, any external connections, uh, write a log file, whatever you do. Um, maybe even save the image if you want to go from, from that state again. Uh, afterwards, you get an event when the, when the lid is open that, uh, okay, you are resume from Hibernate, um, recheck if all the, the external files are still present, if the hardware has changed, whatever, um, and maybe reestablish the database connection again. Nice for, for store or any other application that relies on external, on, uh, external resources. Battery state in charging by low critical is basically just a side effect. Every one of the tools here available have some one power meter, uh, battery meter, one or the other. Uh, and they're probably more accurate than, than all the events that I can get, but it's just a side effect. And the <coughs> battery meter that I have now for, for Object Studio, you can see them here. That's uh, my desktop machine. That's Dirk's machine while it's, it's charging, and that's Dirk's machine while it's, it's, it's charging and working the battery. It doesn't work so well with with desktop machines. For some reason, if you just throw out the power plug, mm, yeah, it does it does that. No, no, no point there. The GUI generator here is something that comes with the Visual C++ or with Visual Studio. Um, uh, that's something that I've written in we were in small talk using the new GUI. Um, the OLA interface, the defined GUI, whoever works with, with common OLA interfaces knows how to deal with those things. Um, sometimes we use them and we need them in, in Object Studio or in, in small talk as well to interface with uh, some COM components. Uh, in this case, you can, <coughs> if you provide a COM component, you can generate the, the GUI for you. Um, in, all the different formats to include it in a H file, to include it in uh, your, your small talk code, wherever you need it, uh, you, can, you can do that. But also, just a, a minor tool was basically just a proof of concept that, that uh, we can do it at all. Now to something that's a little more interesting. Um, it's a tool called Windows Spy. And um, whoever worked with Visual Studio in the, in the past or with Windows knows of a tool called Spy++, I'm sure. You do, uh, the, the gentlemen who use um, system programming on, on Windows, uh, they know that. Uh, it, our tool shows not only the Windows that are available uh, to you in Smalltalk, but of all the Windows that are currently open in the entire system. Meaning that this tool, with, together with the rest of the tools, can not only work on, on Smalltalk and Smalltalk generated Windows, but all of the windows and all of the process in the entire system. <coughs> so that these whole suite of tools can be your, your entry for uh, debugging and testing applications that are not just based solely on Smalltalk or not just both on, on Object Studio, but you can test. I, uh, I'm using the Windows calculator as an, as an example here, uh, but you can test not only Object Studio, but VisualWorks, but uh, any Java, C Sharp, whatever uh, application you'd like to test and use it for. So you can use it now uh, inside Smalltalk. <coughs> and receive the information right, right there. Might be a nice backdoor for some QA department uh, and uh, testing department to get Smalltalk, even if the main development product is, or the main product is written in something else. Uh, Windows Spy, uh, that's the Object Studio, the current Object Studio workspace. Um, you see the, the, the information about all the windows here. Uh, some part of it, uh, you, know, this, you don't see the highlight very much, but um, there's the Object Studio workspace, uh, the, the classes that are underneath the control bar, the toolbar, uh, the status bar here. Here I have the calculator, as I said, I need to use that one. Um, here you have the buttons and that you currently see here. What I found surprising is that we, with all the numbers, with all the text on those buttons, they are not actually text, they are bitmaps. Okay. 
works for me. Didn't know that. Um, Spot told me that. Told me that. So it ties together with all the other uh, system tools that we have. So this is the first one. Um, another thing is called Window Finder. So Window Spy. If you want to, if you want to use that one, you have to uh, the list and you scroll down quite heavily until you find it. But of course, if you don't know the, the window itself or it doesn't have a title. It, text by the way, so we have the window finder. And it finds and retrieves the, the window style and extended style of, again, all the windows that are in the, in the system. It works together with the, uh, with the window spy, as you do you know, with the, with the spy++ plus plus tool. Uh, it draws this nice little red frame around the, the currently selected window. And here, uh, I'm actually having a spy++ plus plus <coughs> open and I'm actually spying on Spy++. Plus Plus. So that I found it very interesting that I, can, that I can do that. So this window here is of a class of a sys 3 to 32 and it has these styles and these extended styles. <coughs> um, probably not too interesting for anybody who works with, with simple applications, um, but at the same time if you have a, a problem that your window doesn't stay on the upper right corner and should be the topmost window, you can check your um, your, your styles there and see if it's, if it's set or not. I wanted to show a, a video here. Unfortunately, this cursor here it changes, and you, you just drag and drop this this uh, cross around, and it, allows, it shows you which uh, window you can select. But it changes the cursor and the CAM software that I use to record my videos actually interferes with that cursor, so makes it makes it difficult to shoot the video here. Process Explorer. Very big sorry. Very big thing that I, uh, I always wanted to do. Um, it's nice that you have the window, but uh, sometimes you want to you want the process as well. Process information about uh, memory usage, uh, time in the kernel, time in the, uh, in the user space, basically. Uh, the process ID, what you have, number of GDI objects, and, and so forth. So, uh, yeah, creation time. Uh, Stefan, no, he went, uh, he said something about um, this image had an uptime of 240 days. Um, okay. You can, you can see the creation time of the process. At the same time, you know how much time we spend in the user mode, how much time we, we spend in the kernel mode during that process, giving me a probably a better understanding of uh, is it constantly running, is it constantly hogging the CPU, and maybe give me an idea of why and if I can in, improve that at the time. Yeah, I have a question. I don't think it's a process. Sorry, uh, operating system level process. So this is not just for the, 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 the smaller processes, because all the information is, is, is there already in your image, and you already have that. But this is for external processes, for any process that is on the operating system level. So you could use this one uh, to actually get information about the <coughs> Faro image with a with web application that's running for 240 days. You just apply, uh, you open up an object studio image, Point it to this uh, to this process, and you get all the information that you need. User objects. User objects um, on user objects on Windows. So, uh, what's the login? What's the what the, the, the user ID? The credentials. Not that you get the user ID and the password. So sorry about that. But uh, you get the, what permissions does it have, and, and so on. Um, GDI objects. Um, I'm sure you know about those. Yep. Um, that's what it looks like. Uh, I'm having Chrome here. Uh, the, the red ones, I cannot. I, I can display because it, it, it exists. But you can see it has a zero GI object and it has a, a creation time of uh, yeah, well, whatever. It's, it's basically empty. Um, this one tells you that this. I don't have enough a high enough privilege to actually get the information, request the information from that process. If I start Object Studio as a, as a system administrator, it would get 
this information as well. But I like to keep uh, work at the level of the of the regular user. And I can even get yeah, drawing here and down here you have object studio. This is my development path. You see the, the process ID, the number of fluids, uh, user objects, when it was started, um, the, the, the time it's spent in, use, in, in the user mode, the time it's spent in the current mode. So by itself, it has some, some more uh, information as well. Uh, here are the loaded modules. So in the, whoever spent some significant time as a, uh, in support knows that uh, those DLLs can be placed pretty much anywhere. Um, you don't really know which ones are actually attached to, to, to your process. This one gives you a list not only of those uh, of the loaded modules that you have, but also of the of the path where it's loaded from. So if you select the DLL. Yeah, the current 32 DLL, um, whoever knows something about Windows knows uh, how to search for those various DLLs and it tells you exactly the path where it's coming from. So can it be uh, in, in System 32, is it in, in, in your local path someplace else, is it in the, in the directory where the executable was and that actually uh, helped us a number of times, not for the current 32. But in case of the yeah, of our own DLLs, that all of a sudden some problem gets reported, something crashes for whatever reason, and uh, you can attach the process monitor here, uh, the process explorer here, and they tell you, all right, um, you should probably set reset your path because the DLL that you're loading is from a totally different directory, and you shouldn't do it. Might might fix the problem. Now let's see, having a video here. Is it video? Should be. Search or the loaded module first. You, you, you get the loaded modules here, and as I said, uh, it's a whole list of them just for, for a little thing. And now, if you look closely, <coughs> I have to do a, a, a Google search for it, and the reporter.exe, that's the, the, the executable of the software that I use to report my videos, it actually shows you um, if that process, uh, if that executable name can be found in Google. Sometimes, I, I hate it personally when some uh, unknown executable runs on my system. If I don't know it, where it's coming from, I try to figure out more about this. And the Google search helped me a number of times to figure out what is it doing here? Why is it on my system? Where is it coming from? So not only the, the modules are there, but also this, this uh, implementing or searching in Google. Of course, it very open, so the default browser, in my case, it was Chrome. Now, the important thing for me, or um, for my colleagues as well, was this GDI log. GDI log actually does what it says, it blocks the, the uses of GDI resources. And it, it does not just tell you that the number of GDI resources increase over time, which they mostly do, but also what type of GDI resource actually is used in that, in, in that case. So um, you can identify resource leaks, and by the type that you, that you find that it's actually leaking, you can do a code review and probably figure out a way to fix this problem. Less resource leaks means that your program application runs more stable and um, it, at least if you have a long running application that doesn't restart every day, you might uh, otherwise run into trouble. So I'm using the, the, the calculator here again. So I open up 
the process explorer. As I said, all the tools are, are integrated here. So first of all, the system tasks that, I, that I'm not going to use. Um, since I'm not running as an administrator, I use the calculator. Um, I start it and basically set the timer to one second. Dirk prefer, prefers it to half it to three seconds, but I want to, to see more, more information. So you see, uh, well, you not see very much, you see just the, the numbers changing, but the, the more important thing, you see a graph. <laughs> the graph changes, <coughs> sorry, after we adjust it a little. Uh, the graph changes by, together with the, with the kind of action that I'm doing on the calculator. So again, external process on Windows, um, and the, the tool is written in the Synchron Smart um, You see, oh, it's going up. You see that the, the green ones are pip maps, uh, the blue ones are the device context, and they basically move the <coughs> step. The regions change very little, the brush are pretty much constant fonts. We are about, I would say, 38 years old. But here, all over 100, just by over 100 for the for the bitmaps and the, the device context. And again, you see it's going slightly up, coming down again for being garbage collected. So there's actually garbage collected in Windows. If you didn't know that, but you know, it collects all the garbage in the in the GDI resources, but it has a lag time. So yeah, we're going up again, and it's always an up and down. If you have a test case, a real test case, where some um, users tell you, look at that. If you opened it five times, or ten times, or a hundred times, you're leaking resources, and your, your whole system fails because there are no more resources there. You're using them all up. You can use this, this GDI log, even from the external. And that's the beauty of it. So you can now basically test your Faro um, application and see what kind of resources it uses here. Um, does it leak in the resources? If so, what type or how many resources does it use? So, um, that was the, the, the calculator. Um, I'm actually pretty good in time. Oops, that was one button. Are there any questions so far? Krista? Uh, just a little technical thing about the ski, I think. Can you get into resources, can you see with a statement or a font or whatever only on the text? Yes. You can identify, hang on, you can identify the, the, the hand of the resource. What you do with that hand is up to you. Alright? You cannot close the handle of a different process. But what you can clone the handle, you can get to the bitmap, you can get to the font and do something about it. Alright? So, again, uh, external if, you, if it's written in C sharp, if it's written in C++, doesn't matter. You uh, can get to all the, the information from the, the through this GDI log. Um, this whole tool set ties together, meaning uh, I can identify a window that identifies the, the, the process, and then I can select the process uh, to open up the GDI monitor on that one. So it's a nice little package. Um, system programmers on Windows have those tools available. Uh, just not in one single package. So you have a, a tool to spy on the, on the window, which is Spy++. You have a process monitor that uh, you have to figure out, okay, Spy++ uses, uses this window, uses this process, I have to go over and manually search for this process, and now I have a third tool that is a GDI log, and I want to know, and I'm not seeing any type of what kind of log, or what kind of GDI resources that this process actually uses. So I thought this, for me it's a big help, for us it's a big help, we identified uh, a number of things actually fairly quickly, that just to make sure that uh, our stuff actually not running out of resources. I'm sure there are still some there, but... Jerry. Do you have um, an application that uses networking, uh, socket connections, can you find those? Well? That's on the next step, you have to talk to Arden to, uh, to allow me to do that. Um, is there any chance to get that to little works? So it could be a little, I don't know, separate uh, package or something. Why don't you just load it? Oh. I mean,
it, it, it loads into Object Studio. It's, it's Windows only anyway, yeah. right? So if it's, it's Windows only, meaning if you have VisualWorks, you already have Object Studio loaded, or you just um, run your application and have this one as a side application. As I said, it's an external process. So you don't want to change your, your image just because you have some, some tests that you want to run or uh, you want to diagnose on your, your image. Uh, um, you remember trading it? Where you, uh, uh, yeah. Any other questions so far? Or is anybody have to be asleep? All right. Well, um, thank you very much. Uh, the star team is here all week. Um, Susanne Fordman is here as her own twin. So we have her here as the small group engineer manager and as the small program director, so you can talk to her in both. Yeah. Aaron Thomas here is the, the small group product manager. The only one not here is Jeremy Jordan. Uh, he is the marketing manager uh, of Simple Small Talk. And that basically concludes my presentation. I don't think I made it.